Hey, good morning, Evergreen. It's good to see your smiling faces. Did you guys smell the pupusas outside? We're so excited to try those later. Well, today is a special day because we get to celebrate Chapter 32 at Evergreen, which we can celebrate. Carlos, <laughs> Carlos and Ilse and Gomez, they are going to be the 32nd pastors of Evergreen. So when you hear us say Chapter 32, that's what that means, this chapter that we're so excited for and full of faith. Um, so this morning we get to have some special visitors, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but we are going to kick off service with a song that is new to us called House of the Lord. Yeah, let's all stand together. We give the glory and the honor to Jesus this morning. It's going to be a great day. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging seas, my God will hold the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. We the sun heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes. Cause he hung upon that cross He rose up from that grave My God's still rolling stones away yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today We won't be quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place we shout out your praise. And we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now you're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Yeah, we are forgiven. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven. Today we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house, Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. One more time. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We shout out.
was lost, but he brought me in. Know oh, his love for oh, me. Yes, your love for oh, me. Through the sunset's spring, oh, it's spring. to the bridge on this song I'm chosen listen I'm chosen not forsaken it's not about me right I mean this is all of us saying this together we are chosen we're not forsaken we're the children of God this is an amazing thing I love leading worship because I love putting words in your mouth okay and that's what worship is all about is we're putting good words amazing words, biblical, solid, scriptural words into our mouth that faith would arise in this congregation like never before, okay? That's why we sing. We don't come just to feel good about ourselves and, and feel good about, you know, everything going on. But there's something of faith that arises in a congregation when we start grabbing hold of these words. This is mine. I yeah. believe this. That's Hallelujah. Right. I'm chosen, yes. not forsaken. Hallelujah. You're forgiven. Hallelujah. His strength, his mighty majesty dwells in you. So we declare it today. Amen. Could you sing that with me? And sing it in faith, believing it for yourself today and for our congregation together. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me. You're not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. 
sun sets free. Come on, you're free. You're free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a believe it. Hallelujah. He's the God of Abraham, the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you'll do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great. Is your faithfulness to me? Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting, same I will praise your name. Oh, great is your faithfulness to me oh. God from age to age though the earth may pass away your word remains the same your history can prove Nothing you can do, you're faithful and true. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faith.
He's my hope and firm foundation. He'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus. He's my anchor to the ground. My hope and firm foundation. Oh, he'll never, never let me down. Great is your faith. faithfulness to me from the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name from the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name great is your faithfulness thank you father this amazing day a day of your faithfulness of your promises becoming reality in our lives we thank you lord for the grace that you've shown us we thank you lord for the faithfulness that you've given to us year after year day after day you come at us again and again you never give up on us <laughs> You're like a rock to our souls. You deliver us, Lord, from those times of evil. And in the name of Jesus, we come to you, <laughs> a people full of gratitude, a people full of faith, desiring to see you more and more and to understand your ways. Lord, show us your ways. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. We love your faithfulness to us. We love the promises that have been kept over and over again in our own lives. And Lord, we pray right now in this, this season and the time of this church, Lord, you would come. You would reveal yourself in new ways, in exciting ways. Let your heart be true. Let it be revealed in each one of us from the youngest to the oldest. We give you the glory and all the honor and all the praise that is due you in the name of the precious, beautiful name of Jesus. We all said, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. It's a great day. Woo! Amen. Amen. We're going to have a wonderful time together as, as we continue on, but we're going to take a minute right now. I want you to turn and greet one another. Just tell them something encouraging. That's something especially wonderful about them. Amen. Hello, Evergreen. Hello, Evergreen. It is so good to see you. If we haven't met yet, my name is Makayo, and here are some things coming up in the life of our church. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Before we get started, in honor of Carlos and Elsian's installation service, Kayla and I, we've decided to recreate some of Carlos and Elsian's best photos. So go ahead and take a look and tell us what you think. EU Summer Camp, this is your last chance. Registration for our youth summer camp is closing today. This is your last chance 
to register. You can do so with the QR code on the screen. eKid Summer Jam is this week and we are so excited for it. We ask that you pray as our teams prepare to love on our kids this week. We would also love for any help that you could offer for our setup and teardown. Setup will be on Monday, July 11th at 10 a.m. and our teardown will be on July 14th at 3 p.m. If you have any questions or if you're available, please email Catherine at ecc4.org. Evergreen, we love to get to know you and know your story. And a great way of doing that is filling out a connection card. You can find these in the seat pockets in front of you and these are a great way to let us know who you are. Whether this is your first time or you've been coming for a while and you have some updates in your life you wanna let us know about, fill one out and put it in the receptacles in the back of the auditorium. Your generosity never ceases to amaze us. If you feel like giving today, there's multiple ways you can do that. You can do so through our website at ecc4.org, on our app, or you can leave a donation in the receptacles in the back of the auditorium. And now Carlos has prepared a special presentation for us. Take a look. Hey Evergreen family, I'm Carlos and today I'm gonna teach you how to eat a pupusa. Before we dive in, I want you to say it with me. Pupusa. Your turn. All right, good try, keep trying. This is what they look like. It is, I call it Salvadorian mana. I think this is what it looked like in the Old Testament. It is the pride and joy of every Salvadorian. It is a, a stuffed tortilla, and the traditional stuffings are cheese, beans, pork, oh my. You could put some veggies in it if you wanna ruin it. I can't guarantee that the pupusa is gluten-free, but today after the service, I can guarantee that it's good and free. Here's how you prepare it. You're gonna want to first start with the salsa. So every good pupuseria, they're gonna give you two sides. The salsa, now this salsa is not too spicy, so go ahead and feel free and pour that. You want to really soak it in, let it settle. Take your time, enjoy this. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take something that they call the curtido. It's a topping, it's, it's cabbage, it's carrots, it, there's some vinegar, I'm sure there's some salt. You're going to want to spread that out nice and even. Every bite should have salsa and curtido in equal amounts. And then you're gonna have a big decision because you're gonna choose, take a fork and knife, and like you would, here, let me figure out whether I'm right or left-handed, like you would a pancake, you're gonna use those tools to, to carve out each bite. And you have my blessing to eat a pupusa with a knife and fork today. But if you want the full experience, you're gonna wanna take these hands that God has given you and you're gonna wanna just dive in. There's something about the hand grease that makes this moment special. I like to say it is the grease that surpasses all understanding that makes this a great experience, huh? So good, makes me wanna break out in tongues. I don't know what it is. I hope that today after service, you enjoy your pupusa. If it's your first time, I'd love to know your experience. I'm talking with my mouth full. I know that's rude, I'm sorry. Love you, Evergreen. So excited for chapter 32. Let's do it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited for those pupusas now. To get our service started, everyone please welcome Natalia. Hey, good morning. We are so excited that you're here at this special day as we get to celebrate Carlos and Ilsean and what God is doing through Evergreen and in Evergreen. So um, as Carlos shared with us, we are going to delight in some pupusas this morning. Um, so the pupusas are out the lobby door is over by the playground, so once you get your kiddos, we invite you to head on over there and get a pupusa. They have some other delicious things like aguas frescas and some um, things for us to try out. So we hope that you will join us over there for that um, and some community time. But before we do that, um, this morning we have the pleasure of um, being with and hearing from some of our dear friends in Foursquare. So first we're gonna hear from Sunshine Eddie. She is our area pastor and she'll be kicking us off. 
Um, and after Sunshine, we get to hear from Dave Edler, who is our Foursquare District Supervisor. And then he will be handing it off to Emily Plater, who oversees Foursquare missions, many missions things. We will hear more of that. Um, and she will be praying over Carlos and Ilsian. And after that, we get to hear from Carlos and Ilsian. So we have a great morning ahead. And without further ado, let's welcome Sunshine. Good morning, Evergreen Church. It is such a treat to be here with you guys this morning as we install your 32nd pastors of this congregation. I, I cannot tell you what a miraculous thing this church's history is. It's beautiful that this has continued and ongoingly been a life-giving sending family. And we're excited that that's going to continue in new and different ways. But God has a new chapter and we're excited about that. Um, so at this part of the service, we do something called the address. And the reality is, is that you guys get addressed all the time. So this morning, I'm going to address your pastors, Carlos and Ilsian, but I would encourage you to eavesdrop. And um, well, first of all, it'd be awkward if I didn't. But also, because we all know that when the Lord has spoken something to us, and when we're living that thing out, that there are times that sometimes our brain forgets, sometimes our spirit forgets. And that is when we need the body of Christ to come around us and remind us of the things the Lord has spoken. So, um, as I was praying for this week and leading up to this time, um, I felt like the Lord led me to a portion of scripture that's speaking specifically about King David, but I believe that it's something that the Lord has for you guys as well. And, and so it's out of Psalm uh, chapter 78, verses 70 through 72. And it says, he chose David his servant and took him from the sheep pens, from tending the sheep, he brought him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob, of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillful hands he led them. And just a reminder to start is that it is God that does the calling. It is God that has called you guys to this place for this season and this time. You couldn't have earned it. You couldn't have worked your way to it. You couldn't have made it up or finagled your way to it. That it is the Lord who has directed and appointed this leadership during this season. <clears throat> and that has been confirmed. That has been confirmed, church. I want to just share with you guys that this calling and this appointment here was not one person or two people's ideas. There were multiple people across our denomination who, in leadership and shepherding roles, who affirmed this calling for this couple to be here during this time. Um, even the fact that Emily's with us, she won't tell you this, she'll pretend like it's not true, but Emily's kind of a big deal. <laughs> and um, the fact that she's with us this morning to pray over and affirm that our denomination is saying yes and amen to what is happening here today is a really special and exciting thing. Um, the second thing that I notice in this verse that I feel like the Lord wants to point out is it says that he took him from the sheep pens, from tending the sheep, he brought him. And there is something important about where you've come from, that where you come from matters, and it's important for where you are in this season, that there is something woven into your very DNA into your life journey and your experience that is bringing a new season here. And it is vital that you bring that stuff with you into that season. We don't leave that behind, right? That's not what was and what is. It is who we are. And so where we come from matters and where you came from matters to be in this place today. The next thing that I felt like the Lord pointed out was that it says David shepherded them with integrity of heart. I actually prefer the way the um, New Living Translation calls it a true heart. And I love that phrase that integrity, authenticity, this is the foundation that all leaders stand on. And without that, we have no platform. We have no space without integrity. We have no ministry without it. And so as it has been 
at his, as has marked your life up until this point, and I know it will continue to be, that every morning we come before the Lord and we say, search me, God. We say, know my heart and test me. Every morning we reset that we come every day to life and to ministry with a true and integrous heart before the Lord, and then we come before his people. And then the last thing it says, it says, with skillful hands, he led them. I love this word, skillful. It's the word used of the master craftsmen that were in charge of the building of the tabernacle and then eventually the temple. And it's a beautiful word because this is, these are people that have a gift and a talent that has been cultivated over many, many years. It's not something they learn overnight or that's just natural, but it's constantly being tended to, improved upon, growing. And I think that as I've spent time with your pastors, something that I've learned very, very quickly about them is these are lifelong learners. They are committed to becoming skillful servants and leaders. And so as God has chosen you guys, and as you tend to the integrity of your heart, we don't simply hope for the best, that we continue to grow and learn and become more of the master craftsmen, craftspeople that he has called us to be as leaders. And so I'm gonna invite um, you guys forward and Dave Edler, who is our district supervisor for our region Sunshine, that was so good. <clears throat> One of the things that, I, I'm, I'm Dave Edler, I'm a Yakamanian, so I grew up in Yaka, <laughs> Yaka Vegas, we like to say, <clears throat> the sunny side of the state of Washington. Um, I'm one of the many people that filter through what God's doing. And it all began with your, your predecessors, as you know that, Jared and Ann Ross are saying to us, we feel like we have right, who's supposed to lead next right in this place. Yeah. And uh, we spent time praying and thinking and talking about that and uh, affirmed that. Just absolutely believe that these two are supposed to lead this church in this next season. And, uh, and we're very excited about that and honored to do that. But also want you to be aware of that uh, there are 285 churches in the Northwest District that we're a part of. But... There are four square churches in 156 nations, over 100,000 churches on the face of the earth, and millions and millions and millions of people who call themselves four square. Yeah. And all of us are connected to this event today. Yeah. And that's a crazy cool thing <clears throat> in my mind, that God is doing something very unique and wonderful through people who stand in the same tribe and say, we're going to reach the world for Jesus. And one of the things that we do in this installation services, we have a covenant moment where I ask them some questions and they respond much as you do in a wedding ceremony with an I will as I ask them, will you do that? And then I ask you some questions because you too are a part of this covenant moving into the next season. So I'm about to embark on that, but the one thing that I want to know from you, and this is something we ask all of the people that pastor our churches, is do you feel called to this? Yes. Yeah, so cool. Well, here are the covenant statements that I want you to respond to. Will you devote yourselves to the worship of Almighty God, to the study of His Word, to prayer, and to personal purity and maturity in Christ? Yes, we will. We will, will you make your family your top priority after Christ? We, we will. will. Will you give yourselves to the evangelization of this community and region, striving for the salvation of people? We, we will. will. Will you, through preaching, teaching, and servant leadership, dedicate yourselves to the edification and maturing of each member of this church? We, we will. will. Will you develop spiritual leaders and enlist church council members and additional staff as necessary to carry out the mission of this fellowship? We, we will. Will you encourage financial stewardship and prayerful support of missions? We, we will. will. Will you, together with the council of this church, steward the business and finances of this local church with transparency and integrity? We, we will. will. Will you represent and strengthen the distinctive side of the Foursquare Church, its goals and ministry? We will. we will. So the charge is from Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Therefore, take heed 
to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers mm. to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Mm. Never forget how important these people are yeah. to him. So now to you, the people that call this your church home, would you respond by saying, I will, if you intend to live this way? Will you faithfully pray for your pastors? Will you support them by faithfully serving the mission of this church? Will you support their vision and dreams? Will you support financially by bringing your tithes and offerings into this storehouse? Will you hold them accountable to put family first? Will you live biblically and deal with your offenses with each other and with leadership with grace in accordance to Matthew 18, 15? Thank you. We're now going to pray. Emily? Thank you. Wow, what a, what a wonderful day to celebrate what God has done here for 32 pastors over 90 years and to celebrate what God has been doing in your lives in preparation for this moment and this assignment. And it's my honor as both a representation of representing Foursquare Missions and, and our global family around the world to celebrate what God's doing in this expression of Foursquare. But today I also come as your friend and um, a friend who shares history with both of you. And in our story, that history is a good thing, just like in your church story. It's, it's a history that allows us to, to tell each other's stories, to remind each other of God's faithfulness and presence all along the way. And when we come to moments like this, church, I think it's, it's sometimes this temptation to think that this is something that God did in the last few months, that God called Ilsian and Carlos to this place in this assignment. But the truth is, is that these moments are really just when things that God's been doing in the secret places all along come out, to pu out publicly. And that this is something that is the fruit of many, many yeses that have cost dearly and were not seen. And so today we celebrate those obediences that you made the decision for each all along the way. So I was praying for today, there, the Lord brought to mind a, a passage of scripture, and, and it's from Ezekiel chapter 47, and, and then you might be familiar with this passage, and, and in this passage, the prophet Ezekiel has a vision, and in the vision, it, it's of the temple of the Lord, but it's not the way it was like in the Old Testament, it, 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 it's new, and, and from the temple flows this river, and the river doesn't flow towards like the way it's expected to, but it flows into the desert. And wherever this river goes, wherever this living water goes, life springs up and flourishes. And at the end of this vision, this is what the scriptures say. It says, fruit trees of all kinds will grow along both sides of the river. The leaves of these trees will never turn brown and fall. And there will always be fruit on their branches. There will be a new crop every month, for they are watered by the river flowing from the temple. The fruit will be food and the leaves for healing. And I share this and I just want to point our attention to a couple things. One is that this temple, this river is really, it, it symbolizes the presence of Jesus. And the fruitfulness of the trees is because of the proximity and the presence of Jesus. The tree itself produces fruit because of the living water. And it doesn't matter where it is. And it doesn't matter what season is because it says every season it bears good fruit. And in this new season in your life and in the life of this church, that Jesus is going to continue to be the source of all the fruit. You're not going to have to build anything. You're not going to have to strategize a new way. But Jesus is still going to produce fruit that will be food and will be healing. Don't forget it's his presence. And as we stay close to that presence, we're able to go anywhere. And then the fruit of that becomes life to others. 
that as you stay close to Jesus, this congregation will eat. But guess what? There's always seeds and fruit. And so as seeds are planted, you, church, will also grow up and become a source of food and nutrition for a hungry world. A source, a place where people can encounter healing because people are broken and desperate. And this will be a place of flourishing that will bless the nations. So as we close, I'd like to invite Dave and Sunshine and everyone else who has been invited to pray. And we're going to, Dave's going to anoint you with oil as a symbol of the, the spirit of God who has called you, set you apart for this season, and we'll pray together. Church, please extend your hands if you feel comfortable and join us in prayer. Father God, we thank you that you have prepared, that you have called, and that you have given Carlos and Ilsian to this assignment in this season. Lord, we together affirm that. We say, Lord, we see your work, and Lord, we say yes to it. And Lord, we also recognize that the, the shepherding of your church, Lord, is, is really a, a job of following. That Lord, that you have called Ilsian and Carlos to be under shepherds to you, the great shepherd. And so as they embark on this journey, we pray that you would open their ears in a new way to hear your voice. That they, like they've never heard before. That they would see you in the midst of every situation they encounter and would follow your lead without hesitation. And Lord, we also pray for continued fruit. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that even as their friends, Lord, I can tell stories of your faithfulness and the way that you have used them to, to bring healing and nutrition to many. And Lord, I thank you that's going to continue and that it will multiply. Lord, we pray that Evergreen in this season will be a place where people receive the food they need at the right time. Lord, that they will receive healing in Jesus' name. But Lord, we also pray for all the seeds in that fruit. Lord, we pray they would multiply. We pray that this would be a place where little seeds become saplings and saplings become young trees and, and then they begin to produce fruit. And Lord, we know that your work is never just about here and it's never just about now. And so we pray that those seeds and those saplings that grow up in this season would spread out along the river of the Lord, bringing hope and the word of God, the gospel, the good news of Jesus to the nations. We pray that Evergreen would continue to be a sending church, a church that takes the good news of Jesus to the places it has not yet been taken. And there would be great fruit and there would be joy in the city. In Jesus' name. So we pray your blessing. You would keep them. You would prosper them and you'd give them joy. And Lord, I pray specifically for their hands, Lord, that you would give them the skill of farmers, Lord, to cultivate, to, to care, to weed, to water. And Lord, would you bring a harvest in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Sunshine, Emily. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Lisa, Natalia, and Kim for praying. Um, and thank you, congregation, for being here today on this special day. We're so grateful for you. Um, I'll let you uh, start. Hey, happy Sunday, Evergreen. <laughs> Happiness does not begin to describe or capture what Ilsen and I uh, our feeling on this day, it really is surreal. Honor, privilege, we have said this before, but I'll say it again. We are acknowledging that we are stepping into potentially one of the uh, greatest honors in, in our lives together. To serve you, Evergreen, it is, um, it is a privilege. And so I, ha I know that on a special day like today, I should wear a blazer. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I don't normally dress this way, but I have this personal practice that on special days, bring out the blazer, Carlos. Yes. yes. So I'm wearing my special blazer today and, and uh, because of the occasion, but I'm also wearing it because it, it actually made me think of something that I believe God started when I was four years old. 
So who's ready for a four-year Carlito story? <laughs> you see, uh, as a four-year-old, uh, I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it ended up in my wardrobe. Uh, I know we didn't go out and purchase it. Someone must have donated this blazer that happened to be like tailor-made for four-year-old Carlitos. <laughs> and I remember slipping into that thing. And, you know, as a four-year-old, right, you get to wear the T-shirts and the jackets and stuff. But a blazer, come on. I remember putting on that blazer, and it felt so good, and it just took seconds for me to gather my parents, my five siblings, and preach my first message. (laughs) Because you see, when I put on the blazer, I I wasn't just Carlitos anymore. I was Pastor Carlitos. (laughs) And I remember uh, my parents uh, reminding me that, you know, I was saying, not only was I preaching a message, I was saying as a four-year-old, I'm going to be a pastor. And I've thought of this moment maybe five times in my entire life because just like that, it came and went. Because by the time I went into elementary school, I had some mentors or some people that I looked up to that um, actually inspired me not to be a pastor but instead to be a cholo. (laughs) As an elementary school kid, I aspired. I said, what am I going to be when I grow up? I'm going to be a cholo. (laughs) And I realized very quickly that I am way too nice to be a gangster. (laughs) Just way... I just would not be a good gangster. And so then I dropped that and I said, I want to be an NBA star. <laughs> and this was in middle school because I don't know if you remember, there was this Saturday morning show called Inside Stuff with Ahmad Rashad, for those of us who are around for it. And they'd have this highlight reel. And I, I didn't want to just play professional basketball. I wanted to be in one of those highlight reels. And so, so in middle school and the beginning of high school, that was the goal. I was going to be an NBA star, but I realized by sophomore year, I was an above average, average basketball player. <laughs> and I knew I needed to pursue something else. And so I hadn't been impacted, uh, formed, um, truly blessed by some teachers and middle school coaches. And so I realized that as an, a junior and a senior, that if I was going to make an impact, I wanted to make it towards the next generation. And what better way? than to go into education and coaching. So that's what I did. And I believe that that profession is, uh, is worth every effort to, be, to make it a reality. And I did that for 12 years. But as I began my teaching uh, journey, actually my first teaching job, the youth pastor at our church, uh, he had to step away because he was going to get his doctorate. And so the senior pastor said, Carlos, would you be the youth pastor to this group? And what I thought, I said, sure, I'll do it for the amount of time that it takes for you to find the real youth pastor, right? I'll be the interim. Well, that began this journey, this kind of co- uh, co-passions of education and being in ministry. And um, two years ago, as we prayed about this invitation, not only was it us uprooting our family and community in Los Angeles, but it was me actually uh, deciding to make a shift from being a full-time educator to being in full-time ministry. How many of you know take that, that takes a little bit of faith? <laughs> and so I feel like in the last two years, it's felt like I've just kind of rediscovered the blazer again. <laughs> and I only bring that up, not, not just to share a story, but it makes me think of what are some of the dormant seeds that God has placed in your life? Because, see, I, I'm, I'm almost 38 now, and for about 30 years of my life, I did not think about the blazer and the pastor role. It just wasn't, it wasn't in the plans. But it seems like God has been just cultivating this dormant inspiration that now is being actualized in chapter 32. And so, Evergreen, in thir- chapter 32, what are those seeds that have been planted that maybe you haven't been thinking about, but God is ready to give fruit and life to? Because let me tell you, if we all decide to walk in the things that God has called us, we will not only be an amazing community for edification for one another, but Washington County and beyond will be much better for it. God is glorified when we walk into the things that he's called us to walk into. And I hope that we can discover that together in chapter 32. Thank you. Good job. Well, as I was uh, praying and thinking through this moment, the phrase that came to mind is, Jesus is the light by which we see. 
And um, I really just sense that, um, you know, one of the things that we've been praying for is God give us vision for the season, for this church. What do you want? Um, we know what we want, but what do you want to do through us? So we've been praying for that. And so I was just reminded that, that Jesus, and, and I love um, uh, just, I think every word that was spoken over us by every person was just a confirmation of what God has been speaking and saying to us. And um, I just want to encourage us to be open. You know, it was hard for me. I grew up in my mom's church. And I said that specifically because it was never my choice. I was just going to listen to mom because we did what mom said. Grew up in my mom's church. And when I finally decided that I was old enough not to listen to mom and have to go to church, you know, college, bye. Which is age 30 for the youth in the room. Age 30. <laughs> when you can make that claim. Um, Teenagers. Yeah, don't leave church, guys. There's a lot of pain involved in that. So, but I, I left. And um, through that, uh, there was a lot of, bad choices and things that I, um, you know, had to repent from and ask the Lord forgiveness from. But I, I'm, I'm sharing that to say that God is able to redeem and restore. And um, I love that I made a choice for myself to say, I want to serve Jesus. Yeah. But it was because somebody was there to share their light, the light of Jesus, so that in my darkness... I was able to say, there's something more. And I know that this is not the way I meant to live. And so I'm grateful. And so I want to encourage each and every single one of us to be a light to those around us, um, to point people to the Father who does good works in all of us. But as I was um, praying, this, these are the few of the questions that came to mind that are really just since the Lord speaking to me. And he said this, will you follow me in paths not yet traveled? Will you look for me in pl places where I'm not yet seen? Will you bring the light to people in their darkness? Will you work the ground that has not yet been worked? And I love that um, you pray that we would become farmers because I don't know anything about farming. We so missed the, the strawberry season, and it's, it's really sad. It's really sad. Yeah, we wanted to pick strawberries. It didn't happen because we don't know anything about uh, farming. Um, but since we got here, one of the gifts that the youth gave us was this plant. And by a miracle of God, it is still alive. <laughs> And it's grown, and it's gotten taller. And that's a lot because we don't have a green thumb. Brown, obviously. <laughs> but I really do feel like it was God's mercy saying, if you trust me to be the living water, I will take care of the fruit. And so I just want to encourage us to be people that are willing to work the ground. It's not a job that we do on our own. But it's a community of faith that God's called us to be a part of. And a work that we're called to do together with you. Because this is what I know when I look, you know, L.A. was a whole different culture than this culture. But I know this. There is still darkness that needs the light of Jesus. Yeah. There is still brokenness that needs God's healing. Mm. So we're inviting you to be part of that. And um, I will speak on this next week, but the verse in Acts, it, it says that the promise of the Holy Spirit is not just for us, but it is for our children and those that are far away. Mm. So Will you be part of this and help us to be a light, to be people that break the ground, to go in paths that haven't been traveled? And the thing about Jesus is that he knows those ways and he will make a way 
for us. So we invite you to be part of this journey to reach and save the lost with the gospel and the good news of Jesus. So would you lift your hands right there where you are, and we're inviting you to be part of this. And Lord, with um, everyone that is in this room and those that um, will watch this later on, we thank you that we can come to you and that it's not in our own strength and it's not in our own wisdom, but it is by your spirit that you will help us and empower us to be a light in our world, to be a hope to those that are in despair. Father, I pray that you would help us to be light to wherever we go. One thing that I love about you, God, is that you're so strategic in where and how you place people. So I know that everybody in this room, you have placed them where they are in their jobs, in their community, in their neighborhoods, because you are strategic in where you want your light. So, Father, thank you that you help us as a community be a people that love you but love others. Help us to be a community where we see young people, students, youth, young adults serve and love you, God. Thank you that it is by your spirit that you would help us to bring healing to the nations and to Hillsborough and Washington County and wherever else you call us. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we celebrate the Lord and what he's doing for Evergreen? We're going to be ending with a song, but before we do, I just want to uh, celebrate the fact that next week we are having uh, a special event, and that's the E-Kids Summer Jam. You might have noticed I'm wearing this shirt. I got it early, one of the privileges of being on the team, right? <laughs> and I'm so excited because not only do we get to serve kids again, on our campus for three days next week, but we actually have a record number of signups. 140 kids will be learning about Jesus here. So how awesome is that? And as part of that great, uh, great story is that we have over 70 of you signed up as volunteers. And so we cannot be the best place for kids and youth in Washington County unless we have a church that's willing to volunteer, step up, and serve our youth. So thank you, volunteers. This is a bit of announcement. You do have an orientation today at 1230 in the center. If you want a cool shirt like mine, you're not going to want to miss that. So uh, I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to sing one more song together. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Hey, can we can we just sing this one more time? And can you like do what it says to do? <laughs> I don't know, just a thought. Uh, you know, but it says sh to shout out your praise. Could you just li lift your voice a little bit? Could you do that for me? I can do that. I'm a choir director. I'm sorry. I got to do this. <laughs> okay. I, I never want my singers to be, you know, against the actual, you know. <laughs> Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If the word says shout, let's do it. Okay. If it says praise, let's do it. Okay. Can you do that? Would you do that with me? Okay, tell me so. All right, here we go. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in 
is surely in this place And we won't be quiet Come on, we shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet Come on, we shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place We won't be quiet Shout out your praise. Besides, <laughs> but before we dismiss you, I want to remind you, don't forget your kids because of your excitement for the pupusa. Also, we do need this space transformed for those of you with some energy. If you can help by stacking some chairs, we're stacking them in sevens and putting them off to the side. We love you. We expect you all to come back next week. Have a great Sunday. Seven.